OK, let's go to some news that will be a relief in part for some in Perth, but still very tough for one family in particular. After 25 years of speculation, rumour and heartbreak for the families without three young women no longer in their lives, today Bradley Robert Edwards was found guilty of the murders of both Kiara Glennon and Jane Rimmer in the Perth suburb of Claremont in the mid-1990s. However, as, as I said, one family was denied closure. Edwards was acquitted of the murder of 18-year-old Sarah Spears. The judge ruling it could not yet be proved. Our own Jane Marwick has been following this story closely, not just because she's a journalist, but also she's had a very personal connection and she joins me now from Perth. Extraordinary day, Jane. We're about mm. the same age. I don't obviously live on, on, on the West Coast like you do, but I remember growing up as a young woman, being terrified of getting a lot in a cab by myself, because we always thought, wasn't it, that it might have been a cabbie. Yeah. This had resonance, still has resonance with me now. How does it feel in Perth? What's your thoughts on today's findings? Uh, thank you for having me on tonight, Peter. Look, um, it's a bittersweet day. I feel incredibly sorry for the family of Sarah Spears and her friends. You'll remember Sarah Spears was just 18 when she went missing from Claremont. She'd called a taxi. When the taxi arrived on the, on the street corner where she called, remember there were no mobile phones in those days, the taxi arrived and she was nowhere to be seen. Uh, but the judge basically said that they had to prove beyond reasonable doubt that... The same person who killed Kira Glennon, who was 27 and had incidentally uh, been to the same school as Sarah Spears, as had I. We all went to Iona Presentation College and Kira Glennon's mum taught me, uh, and Jane Rimmer. So there was enough evidence with... And the bodies of Kira Glennon and Jane Rimmer were found, one north of Perth, one south of Perth, very similar circumstances, found by members of the public who stumbled across them in bushland, covered by some branches. Uh, and there were fibres on these bodies that connected them to a VS Commodore. Now, the upholstery in the VS Commodore was very very specific to that car. So the forensic evidence has been very important. So too uh, a fingernail DNA scratch uh, that was found on uh, Kira Glennon's nails. She had scratched her attacker. Now, with Sarah Spears, her body has never been found. So there is, and it's an awful word, there is closure tonight for the family and friends of Kira Glennon and of Jane Rimmer. However, Sarah Spears' family and friends do not have that closure. The circumstances were very, very similar. Sarah was the first girl to go missing. Uh, she went missing in the January of 1996 on the Australia Day weekend. Mm -hmm. And I spoke to mm -hmm. a guy today who saw her at the Ocean Beach Hotel that day. Uh, her friends were there uh, and she, she, never, she never made it home or she never made it to her final destination. Uh, so it's bittersweet for people. Look... I think the consensus, if I put my... If, if I don't talk from my heart, Peter, I talk from my head, I think people are pleased because Bradley Robert Edwards can go to jail. The judge, I think his finding has been exceptional. I've been reading um, his judgment today. It had to be proved beyond reasonable doubt. Let's hope there is no, no room for any appeal for Bradley Robert Edwards. He can go to prison. But we would all like to know where Sarah Spears is for her family, and I would, I for one, like the whole of the state, uh, Peter, would like mm -hmm. him to confess to the death of Sarah Spears, the murder of Sarah Spears. I say this for people on the East Coast who, who may not, you know, remember this case. I think most people would, though. It was like the Carmen Chan case in Victoria, a young girl who was snatched, I think, from her bedroom, but certainly from home or in and around her home, or Anita Cobby in the case of New South Wales. Um, mm. These women touch the hearts of everybody in the West and it's been something that's stayed with generations of families in the West, hasn't it, Jane? Yeah, and look, there, there were similarities. They were bright. They were smart. They were gorgeous, engaging young girls. Sarah had, you know, just, you just left school when you were 18. Kira, very smart young lawyer. Jane Rimmer, who worked for uh, in Netherlands at a family daycare centre, very engaging. Um, they were... You know, they were, they were like your sister. There was a, Perth lost its innocence. People were terrified. Uh, we knew that there was some kind of white car. People thought it was a taxi. 
uh, there was certainly a, a, a feeling of great terror that young girls, these smart young women who wouldn't get in a car with just anybody, had suddenly vanished, Peter. And it changed Perth and the western suburbs of Perth irrevocably. We will never be the same. And we mourn the loss of three, these three girls tonight, Peter. Beautifully said, Jane. Beautifully said. And I think everyone is thinking of their families and friends tonight as much as if yes. we've seen some level of justice, but they have lost someone that they, that they haven't had in their lives now for many years. Jane Marwick, thank you for your time. Thank you, Peter.